I'd love if, if you're into it, uh, we'll take some questions because we've sure. got another half an hour. Um, oh, so should. if you have a question, raise your hand and, and I'll, I'll repeat your question or you can come up and I'll, I'll give you the, the microphone. Johnny, I know you're I'll chasing it a bit. What's the last time you guys were in the same group? Long time. <laughs> But now I'll, I'll be, now I'll be all intimidated about asking the question perfectly, which I'll try not to be. Let's see. Um, I'm harking back to stuff you were talking about earlier about people's erotic stuff, where it comes from, where it, mm -hmm. what the, the variety and all that kind of stuff. And the piece that you didn't talk about and started, and and I, I I'm, I'm, nobody talks about it. It's not just you who doesn't mm -hmm. talk about it. It's the piece that once I figure out that what my erotic stuff is, and, and I don't have this wonderful Betty Dodson-esque ba basis where, like, even if I never am with another partner, I'll be fine because my self-sexuality life is so strong and, and important to me and basic. Fact of the matter is, is that when I know, when I, I or anybody knows, figures out, finally figures out what it is they want, the, the distance between that and finding that person who wants the same thing with you, enough to do it with you, <coughs> is a huge challenge for a lot of people. And it's not just people who are sad sacks and can't get a date. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of people who are, are, you know, are, are clear and have become clear thanks to what the work that all of us have done in the last 20 years. They have become more and more clear about what, what it is. They've often talked to their girlfriends, if they're women, they've talked to their girlfriends about it. And by the way, I think that's a really big thing that's happened over the time. You know, who knows? Sex in the City probably did it more than anything else. But women actually sit around and talk in public places about their sexuality. That was not happening at the beginning. Well, even the few of us were with the speculums and our girlfriend. We were talking about it. But a lot of people talk about it now. A lot of women do. But anyway, aside from that, with me getting really clear, even if it's, you know, whatever, even if it's just how I want to expand, let's say four women are sitting around. They all have partners, male, female, it doesn't matter. And a, I'll let's assume for the moment that they all have male partners, the sort of general public. And, and they're sitting around, and all of them have partners that they supposedly are in love with or not, and they have sex with them sometimes. And they, they want something different. They want something more. They want to, and I'm not necessarily even other partners. They want to just have some shifts, which will make them happier, feel like they have more sense of agency in their relationship. Um, and then there's, then there's a bunch of, at the next table, there are a bunch of women who are, are really clear what they want, and none of them have partners, or they have one disappointing partner. <laughs> so, is there something? So, your your question is: Is does Susie have any advice for? Well, I, I just I'd like your I'd like her reaction about that. Okay. I mean, you know, yeah, but just like your reaction to it. Your response, Ms. Gray. <laughs> well, um, I feel a little bit. Um, some of what you're talking to me about reminds me of the recent trend to define what happiness is. And there's a lot of books about whether you can achieve happiness. What are the qualities of happiness? How do you make every day a happy day? And um, some of these books have been on the New York Times bestseller list. It's like this really powerful preoccupation with the chattering classes right now. And I hate these books. I despise them. The notion that um, one is happy and completely satisfied all the time just seems ludicrous to me. Like, are you a ninny? Uh, <laughs> you don't have a brain? <laughs> if you're thinking, if you're knowledgeable, um, you should have dark and troubling thoughts uh, available at your fingertips at any given moment, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. And those will be interrupted by states of grace and innocence and sensual pleasures and laughs and so on, but it's going to be a mixed bag. And so the idea that I will be lonely and frustrated and thwarted, to me, that is life, and I, and I know it. Um, and I, this is only speaking for myself, I really do get a lot of mileage off of my own little private world. There's lots of sexual things I've never done with anybody else that um, are just locked up in me and I don't even, um, I don't think I've shed a tear about it. I, 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 I don't, I'm not com so frustrated. I, I do meet people who, as you say, I'm like, I am so thrilled that I finally like 
have my shit together, I could use my words and tell you how I'd like to fuck and get fucked. Um, but now, how do I find someone who's, you know, on the same wavelength? And my, my reaction to that was, well, I would not try to figure this all out verbally or in writing before things begin. I would try, I would just try and try, try it here and try it there and have, like, honestly, how can you say it this without just um, sounding like numbers do make a difference, but by having more sexual experiences, you, can get you, will, have, you will have pieces of this stuff. <laughs> Having them, you have but, to have somebody to have them with before you can have them. Yeah. But come on, okay. it's, 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 it reminds me of the Bill Murray um, SNL thing where they're like, "How do you do it?" And Bill Murray looks at Kenny and goes, "Volume, volume, volume." Exactly. And, but this is where, for for me, this is about community, right? Because if if you source communities of sex, and you and I've gotten into arguments about this before, <laughs> okay, and you will not co-op my stage, young lady. We'll have an, our own interview one day. Um, but the idea of expanding your social networks, because the one thing the internet did give us, um, amongst any other things, is that a lot of people now realize they're not alone in whatever proclivities of, of you know, sexual um, excitement that you enjoy. Um, you know, but I think you know, you're a bit about the happiness piece, and, and I also think there's a whole trend of what's, for, for women who date men or male-bodied people, especially in, in what I've noticed in working with, with people, people who are over 40 um, and 50, there can be some frustration around, I did all my work, and where are the men who can meet me? Mm -hmm. um, and what's interesting to me in, in, in those conversations is that now you have these women who are very empowered who are getting angry again. And it's a kind of anger that the sensitive guys who are now just trying to figure out, am I... Are we supposed to go Dutch? Or can't, you know, is it okay now? Is feminine far, feminism far enough along that I can actually buy dinner again? Like, where are we? Um, the cultural conversations haven't recalibrated yet for any of that stuff to start happening. And there's a lot of interesting anger and fear and frustration. And it's not just about sex lives, it's also about r romantic lives. And, you know, and duration really isn't the measurement of success anymore in relationships. You know, they've stopped making 75-year anniversary cards. <laughs> and it's not because people aren't living long enough. <laughs> you have to give me that. I had the strange experience of going to a 75th wedding anniversary party. Uh, it was my lover, his grandparents. I mean, they had been together that long. They're in their 90s. They're having their 75th wedding anniversary. Of course, they're very tiny and frail and aged and move very slowly. And his petite, white-haired grandmother tottered up to the microphone. I mean, you know, like everyone came. Every possible relative came to this. And they were like, so, you know, what's the secret? That's what you're supposed to say before everyone raises their champagne mm -hmm. toast. And she said, in the end, it all really does come down to good looks. <laughs> <laughs> Priceless, you know, the very thing that we're always reassuring people, it doesn't matter. It's what's inside. You know, and she's just she was so witty. She just blew it all out of the water. But um, I uh, hmm, I know Joni has had this question for me for quite some time, and I know where she's coming from, and I I'll I'll, I'll probably come to a time in my life where I'm railing about it more. Uh, it is obnoxious to um, realize as women in the world we live in now that when you reach a certain age and visibility begins and you, you look at men your own age and there's still 14 year olds throwing themselves at them and you're like, God damn it. <laughs> and it also makes you realize that when you were a young woman, my God, you know, the babe magnet thing was happening constantly. And it either annoyed you or you felt overwhelmed by it. It's constantly that issue of um, once you know, you know, it, that beauty is wasted on the young, you know, or we, we talk about, you know, here you've got it all going on upstairs at a certain age, but you don't have the body that you used to have. It is terribly annoying. Um, so I, I get that part of it. It's just that um, I... 
I'm not personally frustrated in this respect right now. I think I feel um, more frustrated intellectually for sexual colleagues and political comrades who are on the same page as me. I get more, I'm much more depressed by the publishing industry and the mainstream media than I am by my sex life, you know? So it's like, but you know, ask me next year, you know, I, I might, I might have <laughs> be whistling a different tune.